Welcome back to In Your Neighborhood. When you're browsing the stacks of your local library, you probably don't stop to consider the construction of the books. But we met a man in Orangeville whose hobby is bookbinding and restoration. During the day, Stephen Hales is a professor of philosophy at Bloomsburg University. But in his spare time, he can be found in the third floor book bindery of his Orangeville home. His interest in bookbinding began while in graduate school at Brown University. My dad collected books in kind of a minor way uh, when I was a kid, and I always liked his old, interesting books. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into grad school, I had picked up a book that the spine was coming off of it, but it was you know, an old collectible book, and I wanted to see about getting it repaired. I didn't know what to do, so I went to the Rare Books Library on campus, and I asked them, do you have any suggestions? They said, well, we keep a hand bookbinder on staff. And uh, wow. so I went and met with him, Dan Knowlton was his name, and he's like, well, of course, I can repair this and this and that. And then we get to talking, and he says, well, I teach bookbinding, you know, at my home studio, and uh, I give private lessons. And I was like, uh, you know, I'm interested in that. So yeah. then I studied with him for two years when I was in grad school. For the next two years, he met once a week for three hours and learned the art and craft of hand bookbinding. As we discovered, there is far more to it than simply assembling pages between covers. When we visited, Steve was working on a commission from a friend at Oxford University. The works of Thomas More, 1557. Ooh. He sent me three copies, all incomplete. He said, make two complete copies out of them. So not only did you have to bind it, but you had to figure out when... It was a 4,500-page jigsaw puzzle. I had to do paper repairs. I had to re-sew the entire book. Uh, yeah, I got another one to do. The first step in restoring an old book is to take it apart. Old books in particular come in signatures, that is to say gathered sections that are folded. And what you have to do um, when you start working on a book is take it down. So in other words, start pulling it apart. And you do that by breaking it at the sectional mark. But you know what it's like? It's surgery. I mean, really? so it, it's like, if somebody says, never plunge a knife into anybody, okay, that's good advice, unless you're a surgeon. Right, okay. And so that, to me, that's what it's like. I mean, you, you, you just tear it apart, you see how it's assembled, you see mm -hmm. what somebody's done in the past to it, because mm -hmm. often there are these half-baked repairs that somebody's done, and you're like, oh, really, you had to do that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then yeah. I have to undo it and then mm -hmm. do it right. Restoring the leaves of a book can be an incredible undertaking all by itself. Like, some of this is the original paper. Right, right. And so, right. like, this was original, and then you created this and joined it. Now, you, I bet you didn't go to Staples and buy that, that kind of paper. <laughs> no, I'm no. thinking you didn't. No, this is handmade paper that I order from a specialty company called Twin Rocker. And I, I really like their paper best for book binding, but there's other companies too. You have to have the right weight, the right color. You have to have, determine whether it's a laid paper or whether it's a woven paper. Um, so there's a lot to know just beyond how to put the book together. You have yeah. to know all these other sorts of little individual things mm. because you're trying to restore it to its original or as close to its original. I mean, that's the that's idea right. here. This is that's a restoration. Right. The construction of the paper prior to the 19th century accounts for its longevity. This paper is not made from wood. It's made from uh, linen and cotton rags. Oh. And so they would recycle these rags into paper. They'd beat them and shred them or whatever and they'll last hundreds of years. So that's, so it's linen paper. Steve's original instructor provided a lot of foundational information about the nature of paper. He certainly taught me the rudiments of what you need to look for and, mm -hmm. and, and about the idea of handmade papers and craft papers and you know they have certain kinds of um, grain direction so you learn about grain direction and you know mm -hmm. so I mean I did learn that from him but mm -hmm. the more I don't know, sort of more complicated techniques or design elements and stuff. The, these are things mm -hmm. I've learned in my own sense. Here's an example of a repair job on the Thomas More writings. You can see I got half of a leaf to work with and then I had to fabricate the other half and blend it in. That's, I mean, you can, obviously you can see because the color's different, but that's... Yeah, I couldn't get the like color Like you perfect. can't, I mean, you can just barely feel a ridge, but that's incredible. Thanks. How did you get all of this stuff? Did you... This, this I got a scan of the original title page and I ran this piece of paper through a laser printer. Wow. And then I pasted this down with wheat paste mm -hmm. and as you can see I have some gigantic presses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of smoothed it out by hand and you put it in one of those big presses between blotting paper 
and that's how it comes out. After any paper repairs are completed, they must be collated and gathered into signatures. Correctly assembling the leaves can be quite a task, depending on the size of the book. Oh, you got to go through it, especially something like this, leaf at a time, collate the whole thing and make sure it's perfect. And I've worked on books that not only did not have page numbers, but they weren't even a language I knew. Okay, try to collate that. Each signature is hand sewn onto cords. These cords are the backbone of the book and give it its structure. Depending on what size the book is, maybe you have three, five, six of these. Uh, and then you lay the signatures in like this. And then you take needle and linen thread and you poke it through the signatures around the cord around the next cord, oh. around the next cord, like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, then you lay down another signature and you work your way back. Another signature, work your way forward. So literally a page at a time. I mean, well, I, I mean a, 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 a signature at a time. A at a time. That's exactly right. And it'll hold maybe eight leaves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so about eight leaves at a time, typically. Now what you do is you take this and all the stuff you need and sit in front of the TV because it's completely mindless work. <laughs> you can just watch a show or something and sew up. Modern books have bindings that are glued. There's no cording or stitching in the book. The sewing is like the bones of a book, mm -hmm. okay? If you don't put in any bones, but you just put in a lot of uh, muscle, which is how they make modern books. Right. It'll hold together for a while, but mm -hmm. you don't have any bones, you know? <laughs> the invertebrate model is not gonna last that long. This would be a signature, so you'd have right. it on like that. I'd punch a needle right through there. I'd right drag it along, there. wrap uh, it around there, punch it through, drag it along. You know, wrap it around, punch exactly. it. Exactly. And then lay another one on top, go the other opposite direction. Then all the stresses, how should I say this? They're zigzag stresses, if you see what mm -hmm. I'm saying, so it all mm -hmm. balances out. Right, no, because you're going back and forth, mm -hmm. and, and I see what you're saying, so this really is, when they say it's the spine of the book, it literally, yeah, when they did it this way, was the spine exactly of the book. That's exactly right, that it's is like the spine of the book. Look at that, yeah, we've exactly taught biology, right. <laughs> we've taught <laughs> physics, we'll study yeah. philosophy later, because that's what he really does, and then, and I'm not bonding books, I'm thinking deep thoughts. <laughs> Once the book is sewn together, it's ready to have the covers or boards attached. In this particular one, um, he wanted me to preserve the original boards. So these were the covers that were on it, mm -hmm. like that. Now these are 18th century, they're not original to the book, but he wanted me to keep them anyway. So naturally I have to get leather to go around the spine that's going to be this color. Okay, well that's that. Okay. So it's pretty close, huh? Then what I'll have to do is pare this down so it's like paper thin at the edge. Then I'll fit it up underneath here. See, so I... Oh, so it slides in It underneath. slides in. That's uh -huh. exactly right. This is a French paring knife. And uh, we do... French people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so you use lithographer's stone. Of course. And... Uh, oh my word, look at that. Oh wow. And he's also really good at Thanksgiving turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so... Wow. Okay. So I'll, I'll get it nice and thin, not not that thin, but I mean, but there's a, you, I want, know, you want to graduate it for right. about an inch in for this kind wow. of work, and then I'll fit it underneath here. You would have the cords that you've sewn the book onto, yeah. they would come up, or they go go around, and you punch down through the surface, and oh, it would, okay. you'd actually tie the covers on. Oh my then word. You'd, you'd have all kinds of glue in here too. They used animal hide glue. And what I've done here is I've made phony raised bands. So normally, genuine raised bands are because you've sewn the book onto cords. And so it's, it's structural to the book. Oh, okay. And this sort of restoration, what I've done is I've made these fake bands and I'll work the leather over it, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. Tell right? me how that's different. Like you were saying the bands would have normally gone if you'd it was a You'd have a cord coming up like this. Okay. And then the, the pages are sewn around the cords. Okay. Now, so what do you have instead? This is like obviously a solid piece here. Right, so I did sew the book together, but I didn't leave the cords out because mm -hmm. sort of threading them into reused boards is really hard. Right. And I, I didn't see a value in it. So this kind of binding is called a hollow back. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll be all glued in. And uh, this is a sewn structure. There are countless choices in leather for a binding and Steve keeps a number on hand. Oh, it is incredibly durable. This will this will last hundreds of years. Calf, Interesting. Calf skin doesn't last quite as long, but it's smoother. I mean, feel yeah. the hand on that. Oh my word! Wow. Yeah. Some nice boots. Steve readily admits yeah. that the assembly and sewing of a book is not what grabs the average person's attention. 
It's the flashy gold tooling on the spine and the boards. The stuff that no one will ever see is fabulous. Yeah, exactly. Do you know how well I sewed this thing? You, you know, yeah. you'll never see it. Right. Well, and that's where you have, you know, you have to love it and you have to care about it, like yeah. you said. You do it because you care about it, not because of necessarily the monetary value or whatever else, because nobody would spend that kind of time on it, you know, hand sewing oh, yeah. up, because it's, that's the no credit stuff. That's the unglamorous part. That's exactly Everyone's right. like, what kind of awesome lettering did you put on it? When you're like, I you spent 49 <laughs> hours sewing that thing. Yeah, that, that's no joke. I mean, it, it's like, it's like buying all new mechanicals for your house. Okay, mm -hmm. there's no glamour in that. Uh -huh. I got a new furnace, who cares, right? Right, right. you know, yeah. it's like I redid a bedroom. Oh, that looks good, I like the colors, you know, yeah. I redid the kitchen, okay, that has glamour. Put in a new furnace, no glamour. I mean, right. that's what it's like with the structural part of the book. Nevertheless, the tooling is an important step in the bookbinding process. You tool it, now mm -hmm. how do you get all that nifty stuff? There's two different ways, okay? The traditional way is you use gold leaf. Mm -hmm. and then you lay down the gold leaf. I mean, you have to prepare the surface in a certain way so the gold leaf will stick. But you lay down the gold leaf and then you heat up a tool and, and press it in. Uh, and you'd first sort of stamp it, what's called blind stamping, just get the impression. Mm -hmm. And then you'd lay the gold leaf on top. Well, you put a little glare, the stuff that makes it sticky. Mm -hmm. Then once that dries, you lay the gold leaf on it and you hit it on mm -hmm. again. And then that will um, fuse the gold down. And that, into, the leather, into the basically. leather, basically. Another way, which doesn't produce quite as beautiful results, but still pretty nice, is to use a hot stamping machine. Now you still use real gold, mm -hmm. but what they do is they back the gold onto mylar, really super thin mylar, and you mm -hmm. stamp right through that. It's, it's much easier, much faster, not quite as good, but pretty close. This is real gold, oh, wow. and like I said, back down to this really thin mylar. And so you try to use up as much of this stuff as humanly possible because it's right. expensive. And get as many shapes <laughs> yeah, out of that dough right. where, where you don't have to re-roll it. Yeah. Oh, my children would just prefer you do it the other way because I'm like, oh, don't And often, you know, we hit things a couple of times if you really want oh, it perfect. Oh, look at that! <laughs> That's, That's cool! <laughs> So it's really, I mean, it's a hand, I mean, boy, it is simple. Yeah. Yeah, it came out pretty nice, huh? Now, what I did notice is you had to put that in mm -hmm. upside down and right. backwards. That's right, right. Did your brain just not work like everyone else's? Like, <laughs> it, is well, that? Once you figure out the technique, then you've no, got it worked it out. out. That's <laughs> awesome. The bindery has a few other handy tools like the board cutter and paper presses and storage for flyleaf papers. But the vast majority of the space is consumed by items necessary for the glamorous part of the binding. These are all typesets. I mean, they're mm -hmm. all different fonts. Yeah, that's right. Different fonts and point sizes. That's right. That's amazing that you need that much stuff. Because you would think that book binding, it would be all about, like, you need all of this stuff to make these amazing books. And you, no, you really need all this stuff to like letter it. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. I mean, it, you know, like here, I've got a bunch of Old English uh, font, I've got Bedoni over there, Gaudi, you, you know, and I wish I had more, but mm -hmm. at a certain point, you know, kind of run out of space. Over the last 20 years, Steve has honed his skills on books for his own collection, as well as those of clients. Many projects offer the opportunity to try something new. I, I mean, I've done a lot for myself, but I have done, I don't know, hundreds of books for clients, hundreds. I have bound scads of family Bibles. I mean, yeah, yeah how those big old things are always falling apart. I've done a right. lot of those. I've got a friend who collects comic books. I've bound up 30 volumes of comics for him. Nice. You know, so, and actually one kind of fun thing about doing comic books is you can do crazy inventive designs. It doesn't matter. If you're doing mm -hmm. antiquarian stuff like this, it has to be period perfect. Right. Okay, if you're doing comic books, I think I'm going to bind this in orange. You know yeah. what I mean? Who's going to say you can't? Right, exactly. I'm right. going to stamp it with, you know, whatever crazy design. I'm going to have mm -hmm. golden leaves. I don't know. Right, you can just do whatever you do want. Do whatever you want. 
think there's more than one fun part. You, you know, when it comes to something that's really okay, I don't. These pages are all jumbled up. It's missing leaves. It's in languages I don't know. It's maybe it doesn't have page numbers. This sort of thing. I, I mean, I like being able to try to figure it out, see how it would, how it's supposed to be, what it was like originally. But at the same time, things that don't have that investigative angle to them, I like having the liberty to come up with exotic designs and binding books with money or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and so I like that part of it too. Mm -hmm. and, and even on antiquarian restoration work, I mean, maybe you're going to tool the spine or the boards in a certain kind of way and you come up with the designs and they need to look period on what are the tools they used at that time and, you know, what I have that I can, that will emulate those and, mm -hmm. you know, so that, I like that too. <laughs> you think you've worked on, like roughly? 1481. What was I that? think um, it was a Boccaccio uh, genealogy deorum. Do you ever get stuff and go, I can't believe I have like, I yeah, can't believe someone yeah. found this. Like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, absolutely. Since you already like books to begin with, like, yeah. do you get things and you're like, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to touch it. I, I've gotten well, and initially I used to be really uh, apprehensive about that. I mean, when you're working on, on a book that's five figures in value or more, mm -hmm. you know, and it, at first I was very nervous about it, but now, you know, once you realize, look, it's just another old book, it's got the same problems as any other old book. In a sense, repairing and restoring any type of book gives it a second life, a life that will allow it to be enjoyed and appreciated for many, many years to come. You feel a kind of obligation to the preservation of it. It's mm -hmm. completely independent from its monetary value. In his own collection, Steve has tested the limits of his abilities and creativity. On some, he's experimented with intricate hand tooling on the covers. On others, he has used wood for the boards, rather than the typical cardboard. And for this little gem, Steve utilized every box-making skill in his arsenal. There are equal parts craftsmanship and artistry in each binding. For Steve Hales, creating something unique holds a lot of appeal. I, I would be bored if what I did were edition work. I mean, like some binders will work for private presses where they'll do runs of 50 books or 100 books or something like that for a small audience. I'd be bored out of my gourd to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't make 50 copies of the same binding. If you have a project for Steve, you can contact him via email, which is hales at bloomu.edu. Well, that does it for this episode of In Your Neighborhood. A great big thank you to Stephen Hales and to Ben Bonner of Vindic Heibel Tree Farms for being so generous with their time and talents. If you want more IYN, and who doesn't, you can visit our Facebook page and check out our YouTube channel. You can also see segments online on our website at www.ccnnews8.com. I'm your host, Jennifer Wakeman. Thanks for watching. <laughs>